Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video we need some more science in order to do a Kerbal landing on the moon. All our contracts are aimed for that, mainly planting a flag on the moon, walking on the surface. But we can land on the moon without a Kerbal. If we use a probe, we've got the probe Adobodyne Octo. And so maybe that's the best way to get our science, to land a probe on the moon. And to that end, I'll start building it. I don't know why the music suddenly decided that it would play today. I checked the difficulty settings and uh, uh, somebody had suggested that because I didn't click apply at some point that the difficulty settings might not have been applied for the part uh, pressure and g-force limits, but they are. So that is done. And Kerbal g-force limits. So uh, just to make sure that that is the case. So we will need comms and comms are going to be a problem. I'm thinking one of these Communitron 16S's should be sufficient to communicate to uh, the level 1 DSN that we have. And we'll balance it out with other stuff. So that's 0.05 tons. And I'll put it here. If we're gonna put this on top of the rocket, and I intend to, maybe the best thing to do will be to angle the solar panels like this and maybe they can deflect some of the air. I don't know. Uh, sometimes I've done this sort of thing before. So there's that, and maybe uh, we can squeeze another uh, a battery here, 0.015 on this side, and in theory this would be balanced. So let's see, it looks pretty much centered to me. Uh, just out of curiosity if we move that, it probably doesn't matter, they probably just apply the mass to the thing that they're on, but we might as well be safe about it. Yeah, it's probably not that complicated. But we'll try and do it legit. So there's a thing, but we still have that top node that's irritating. If uh, we really wanted to cover it, the parachute would probably be good. But we'll try it like this. If we had proper aerodynamics, this would have an effect. Though you really, really would not want the solar panels facing the airstream like this. This is not how it's supposed to be, but I'll take, I'll take the stock benefits in this situation since the solar panels can survive re-entry anyway. Okay, so that's a little probe. It's got comms, it's got science, it's got power. Alright, so now it needs fuel. Okay, we've got eight parts so far. And of course we're gonna have, you know, air resistance, which is gonna be a problem. I don't want to have to put landing legs. I don't think we have... Oh, we do have landing legs, but we'll need too many of them. It's too many parts. So... The simple thing, I think we'll just use two ants on the side. And let's put them on this side. Two ants is better than three legs or four legs. I know, we're, we're, we're doing things that in the previous video we found out maybe we shouldn't do, but... 2103, I think, is enough to go to the moon and land. Uh, somebody pointed out that I did have this tank available, so let's go ahead with that. And that'll keep part count low, and we'll use the Terrier in this case. That's a lot of delta V, but not a lot of thrust to weight ratio. And vacuum, well, it's a lot of thrust to weight ratio, actually. So that's probably good. So down here, well, I'm, I'm just uh, racking up the... So, well, that thrust to weight ratio is not so good. Let's cut down on this. We seem to have a lot of delta V. I mean, but I say that and then we fail. So, uh, 1.36 uh, uh, is good. Let's get the fins on. I know about the center of mass and center of lift, uh, center of drag, etc. Pressure. Actually, it's supposed to be center of pressure. But, um, and it's, it seems fine here, but uh, if we take this off, obviously, God knows. The cent I see the center of uh, lift is all weird when you take off the fins, because it doesn't understand. Uh, Kerbal Space Program doesn't really give you that kind of information very accurately, unless you have FAR. And then even with FAR, I suspect it most of the time. So, I mean, we know that actually this isn't where the center of lift is. Uh, we could uh, help ourselves by... Oh, do we not have fuel priority? Oh yeah, we do. It's right there. Uh, so we could help ourselves by making sure that the fuel priority is lower for the higher tanks so that the center of mass stays up. 
that's one thing. But you'll never actually get below this center of lift if this is the right location for the center of lift, of course. So this way you'll drain this tank first and then drain that one, that one, that one, which in real life doesn't happen that way. But in real life what would happen is they build one big uh, liquid fuel tank and one big oxidizer tank or reverse them off on the oxidizers on top and uh, they'll each drain halfway. So anyway, it's a totally different deal. I think we can land this. We should probably be able to do goo too. I wonder if goo could potentially block the top node of the ant. But then uh, this stage will have less delta V, but I think we can get away with it. I think the terrier can transfer us. 1557 would still make orbit and uh, land just fine. We're not recovering this time. I'm trying to transmit the science. I don't know if we can transmit the goo science properly. Maybe... I, I don't want to do mission creep here yet. <laughs> we'll do mission creep next time. Let's let's try to keep it simple. We seem to have enough Delta V. We seem to have enough TWR. Uh, here we have 1.86 there. Here we have one. Uh, I mean 0.81, which is pretty good. And that's pretty quick burn time. And yeah, so we'll, we'll call this Moon 1. And we will see. All right, here we go again. SAS on, throttle is up, and launch. At least this time we won't, we won't have to wonder about our moon encounter thanks to the tracking station unlock. I should have checked for our satellites up above, but we will be making orbit pretty quickly given the thrust weight ratios, so. I think we'll still be in line of sight of the KSC by the time we make, make orbit, but I'll double check. Uh, not m not much uh, drag this time. We're going through the speed of sound now. It's not wobbling all over the place. Yeah, it's getting a little... Oh, oh, okay, I was lulled into a false sense of security. We're going through higher dynamic pressure even though we're through transonic. Okay, let's throttle down. Somebody suggested throttling down. That's true. I could have done that before, too. Nope, nope. We'll be fine. Mm, uh, oh, no. Uh, okay, this way, this way, this way. No, oh, it's getting a little bit far and stretched out there. Okay, but let's get this done quickly and it'll be good. Okay, uh... 99 by 80 and it looks like we're communicating, communicating through ComSat 4 at a 52% strength so that is working. And we want to transfer to the moon. We can't plot things yet. We don't have uh, that mission control extension. I could probably afford it actually. So we'll just do the moon sighting method first. I could have just put one solar panel uh, but I wanted to... Oh, oh, but we passed the moon sighting method. But I wanted to create that sort of aerodynamic top to this, if you will. And I think it worked pretty well. Okay, out we go. That is our target. Okay, moon periapsis 7 kilometers. Well, that's certainly close enough. Um, maybe we should... Uh, Tamp it a little bit. Well, it's changing as we turn. I hate when that happens. Uh, that's too sensitive. I'll need to turn it down a bit. Ah, uh, that's 57 kilometers. That's good. Okay. On we go. Let's make sure we get charge. Yes, we're getting charge. Now, what about comms at periapsis here? Ah, yeah, the periapsis is on the right side for comms, so that's no problem. It looks like our comm lines are good. That's no problem. It's possible we could, like, do a hop between two different biomes. Unfortunately, the Kerbin facing side is also a nighttime side right now. I guess we should aim for the East Crater just out of preparation for picking up the moonstone and everything. 
Me should also do Minmus. Having done real solar system for a while, I completely forget about Minmus. <laughs> right, we have two moons around here. But we don't get any contracts for Minmus, is the problem. People always say, well, it's easier to land on Minmus and everything. Yeah, but they don't give us contracts for Minmus. I checked, I checked that uh, before starting to record what contracts we have. We don't have any Minmus contracts or anything. It'd be nice if they could give us contracts for Minmus. So what I think we'll do is we'll try and land close to the edge of this crater. And then if possible, if it turns out we still have some Delta V, we can try and hop out of the crater into a different biome and do a second goo there. Well, we won't be able to redo the thermometer, I don't think, so... Okay, let's make an initial descent orbit. So just something that slightly overshoots. Okay, we've got sunlight. We've, well, I mean, it's at this really shadowy angle and we've got comms. I hope, yeah, the comms will be directly overhead, so that's fine. The lip of the crater isn't going to mess us up. Let's just go for it now. Yeah, let's finish this off. All right, that's that. So, staging and ignition. Should be fine. Okay, let's see. I don't have any suicide burn countdown or anything like that. But this is pretty frisky. I guess we'll head straight north for the, if we want to go to the outer biome. I think we can. I mean, we've got enough to make orbit potentially. I'm having trouble gauging how this is going to go compared to like Earth's moon, so. Well, there goes the terrier stage. Okay. Final descent. Looking good. A little bit of a slope here. We're landing on our tank. We should be careful. Uh, uh. Oop. All right. We still got 1,061, so yeah, we could make orbit again easily. Probably even return, potentially, but we don't have any need to do that right now. Okay, Moon's East Crater. Okay, and we have power. We are getting power, barely. Um, let's try and transmit. Okay, we've got that. Barometer. Good times. Is that enough to transmit it? Well, I mean, it should be less than the goo. Oh, not quite. View data transmit. So much, so much data to send to say, actually, not much atmosphere, but <laughs> it's okay. And thermometer. Okay, and we'll wait till a full recharge, and we're gonna head straight north and try and hop. Uh, maybe over there would be best. Make sure we're clear of the crater, and then we'll get that science. Okay, here we go. And again, I'm going to overshoot a bit so that we can slow down. That looks good. Off it goes. Oh, there's that arch thingy. There's an arch there. I wonder if that's a, like a separate biome or something. Gosh. Should have gone for that. I don't know if it would be useful or not, though. Final descent burn again. No, oh, maybe we can't do it like that. Let's see. It's important that... Now, when I say final descent burn, I mean I don't want to shut off the engines. But that requires our thrust weight ratio to not be so high that we start going up or something while keeping the engines on. 
Hope you stay charged. Whoop. All right. I almost heard a thunk when we hit the ground there, but all right. Observe mystery goo. Transmit. We are not recharging right now. But I don't know if we can, even though this is all very well lit here. Uh, it looks like we can do new stuff here. Hold on, keep that experiment. Uh, is the sun gonna come up a little bit more? Come on, the sun is clearly there. Come on, there we go. You lit the whole side of this. Okay, transmit. Okay, highlands. This is the highlands. And barometer. So, plenty of science we got here. But what should we use it on? I think we're done here. 352 is not enough to go up and come back down safely. Go up and crash, yeah, if we were trying to do an impactor, but we don't get impactor science. Did we at least get the, yeah, we did get the land on the moon part of the contract done. Okay, so we'll just leave this be. Maybe some mission later on we'll visit this, who knows. Back to Space Center. Okay, so we've got 99.7 science and we need to decide on what to unlock. I know I've been talking about nose cones and fairings and such, but fairings are over here and it'll take more than 90 to get to them. Nose cones are over here, uh, but we need to focus on landing on the moon and nose cones aren't necessary for that because the pod, the Mark 1 pod, will provide the aerodynamics for us. We don't have to worry about a nose cone for the moon landing part. So what we would like is, I mean, some engines would be nice, but really the proper form factor tanks are more important, uh, especially for part count purposes. Though I think I'll unlock the pad, we'll see. Uh, we've got money now too. So it says requires any so I can unlock it. I think we're going to go with fuel systems and we'll see what that can do for us. Okay, let's see if we can make a moon landing mission first. And if it turns out we can't, we will unlock the pad so that we can in that case with the higher limits. So parachute. And so we'll keep this simple. I'm assuming the Kerbal can hop on back into the pod without ladder rungs. This, you know, uh, it could be dodgy, but when we're going with 100 the blader. And we're just gonna, yeah, actually I'll tuck that in. I hate that thing. All right, so now something to land on the surface and then get back to orbit and go back home. So all together, I want to budget about 2,300 to be safe. I am aware that uh, if you play your cards right, it could be less, but uh, can we, is it the spark engine that I want more or something else? Well, let's just focus on the moon. We could do Minmus, but they haven't given us a contract for it, so we'll do the hard one first, I guess. So, we've got 5.04, but we need to add more Delta V. I'm, I think I'm tempted to do the 4 tank version that I've done before, for old time's sake. Which is like this. And in terms of aesthetics, I like to tuck it in, but we'll we'll minimize that. That and well, it, we can bring it down a little bit. We we're gonna land directly on them, because that's easier and not only saves part count but saves. Oh, uh, we we want it as an X maybe so that the Kerbal. No, actually having the Kerbal stand on it is best. Uh, the decoupler is going to be interesting. We have to make sure that spark engine is really flush to these. Otherwise they'll be clipping off the decoupler into the tanks. So, uh, that's a lot of delta V. It's still more than enough thrust to, weight ratio, thrust to weight ratio for the moon. That's really all we need, need in theory. 
But this is pretty heavy now. This is nearly five tons, so we need a launcher that can get five tons to orbit. If we take a look at the 3,200 there, 800 to, well, let's say 900 to go there, 300 to make orbit, so that's 1,200. 1,000 to land, and then maybe 1,000 to get back in total. Um, we could probably swing that. I think that's okay. And we'll switch back to Kerbin. 0.82 for the Terrier. Hmm. Maybe we should go to the next one. We don't have the decouplers for 2.5 meter or 1.875 meters, though. Maybe we should stick to this form factor for a sec. So this... I'm sure we'll need all of them. I don't remember which one's which by the name. I think this is the 1.875 meter to 1.25 me 1 meter one. Yeah. And we've got these fuel tanks, but that's not what we need right now. We need these. Actually, we'd like the longer version, but that's not something we've unlocked. Oh, over part count? Oh, over uh, pad limit. Well, let's see. Let's see. Uh, we'll probably do the unlock. We still need to put solar panel and everything. Let's put some solar panel on it. And I'm mostly interested in having the plant a flag done, EVA on the surface sample from that. Not interested in the thermometer barometer stuff. We can send a probe for that business. Uh, even the goo. Well, we'll do the goo on later tries. So there isn't enough thrust weight ratio, of course. Um, we could unlock the Reliant and have two on the side as booster engines. Sort of, sort of the in the style of Atlas. You get these booster tanks, but I don't think they were very efficient. I ran the numbers at one point. I found them very inefficient. Now oh, maybe we should just use these. I think it's the time for them. Yeah, okay, okay, wait. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Because we don't have the nose cones. This might be the one time when they're really useful because we don't have the nose cones, you see. I'll only put two, though. Are they their own radial decoupler though? No, we'll need other radial decouplers, so that doesn't work very well. I could do something ridiculous with the Oscar Bs. And, yeah, can we surface mount these? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, it's not on the this decoupler. I, I guess this doesn't allow for that sort of thing. I think it'll be simpler just to stage off the engines. They're pretty heavy after all without staging off the tanks. Okay, well, it doesn't know when the stage is going to run out down there. Well, this is a thing. Well, at least gets off the ground. Let's make sure it's stable. We don't have launch clamps, so I'm concerned about whether this is going to hold itself properly. Got a wobbly point with the spark engine there. I have numerous concerns about this situation. I think we should bring it out uncrewed first. I think for once it would be prudent to do this. It's a cost, but you know. This seems risky. And we'll uh, we'll do the whole thing, I think, uncrewed first. So we'll have a Commutron 16S. We'll have two solar panels. Radial decouplers would have been good. Maybe we should carry some goo, but maybe that's also mission creep. <laughs> um, the Delta Vs actually do change based on whether there's a Kerbal in there. That's interesting. 
Kerbal costs us 100 meters per second. Uh, maybe we can put some goo then, yeah. Or, yeah, we'll land somewhere else. Let's get the science then. If we're gonna do this on crude. Uh, we'll call this Moon 2 so that uh, spies from other Kerbal states will not know what it's all about. Oh, it's really expensive because the experiments are actually really expensive. Okay, I'm gonna unlock the pad. Okay, launch pad. Nope, not that's that's not what I wanted. Right click, upgrade. I guess we'll upgrade mission control as well. No, wait, it's still. Oh, now we've got too many parts. Part count limit is the VAB. All right, maybe we should. Uh. All right, maybe we should abandon the whole science thing. Gosh darn it, but it's more important to test the system out properly first. We could probably do a moon landing with less, but and I may, may resort to simplifying eventually. Okay, well it's standing on the pad with minimal wiggles. SAS on. Thrall is up. Oh, I could dump the monopropellant. Well, anyway, that'll be like a Kerbal mass simulator at this point. So... Go! We could just not decouple the Reliant engines off, but eh. Pretty sure there should be lots of pressure back here as far as center of pressure versus center of mass is concerned. We could have done fuel prior. Let's uh, make sure there's lower priority so that fuel priority is a little bit more favorable. Whoa, 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 okay, it's deviating, it's deviating. We're in that part. Okay, I'm pretty sure we can, yeah, we can stage off the booster engines, so... Off. So we'll say 145 stage off booster engines, or maybe 32 kilometers. Might need fins still here. But that'll be extra parts too. I think I'm overdoing it a bit. It's true. Oh, I should have dumped the solid fuel since we're not separating those off. Okay, separation. Separation? I think we can burn at apoapsis here. We can just wait a little bit. We'll still have comms. Right, right. It's a little bit stretched. Oh no, we lost comms. Um, and this is the wrong side to lose comms on. Not a problem with a Kerbald mission. Ah, horizon issues. It'll just delay our Kerbal mission a little bit. Because we'll, we'll wait until the moon gets over there. This, in this case, is not a deal breaker. Oh, right when we, uh, and, well, I mean, I, I already shut down the engine, so. We got comms back through one of the satellites. Let's make sure we're recharging. Okay. So we will wait a bit for the moon to get over there so that this apoapsis actually helps us. Well, that's a free return. A loose free return. Okay, that's good right now. How about comms at our burn point, though? Um, I think that can communicate to whatever that center that is. So that commsat4 can communicate down there for us. Okay. Oop, what sound was that? All right, so let's go. Okay, separation, separation, and ignition. So clean separation of the terrier stage. And it's all a little spark now. Yeah, we are communicating through ComSat 4. They're both called ComSat 4, so... Maybe not the best naming situation on that. I don't like where the periopsis is, but it'll depend on when we get there how it is, though. 
Okay, that periapsis is facing Kerbin, so that's no problem. And this time, the side facing Kerbin seems to be lit, so that's good too. No, oh, there's the other landing site, isn't it? Or the pod. Uh, I mean, the lander. That's the lander right there. Small world. I'd describe our delta V margins as luxurious at this point. Okay, that's fine. So, well, rather than land over there, we'll land over here. Since we have a bit of an inclination, we might as well take advantage of it. And not that we're going to get any science, but, you know, variety is good too. And let's do an initial burn to set our descent. Seems good to me. I guess over here might be good. So let's leave it like that. We've got less thrust to weight ratio than the little lander, of course. I didn't really want to go over here. I guess we're committing now, so. We will end up where we end up. We've got a little bit of hover fuel available. If we really hit that lip there, but I think we'll go past that. Maybe. Okay, the final descent burn. Oh, there's a little thing there. A mini crater, a chimney stack kind of thing. Vent. This is not actually where we need to land the Kerbal. We need to land the Kerbal at the East Crater though. To pick up the Moonstone. Just casually setting down here. Up. All right, so a Kerbal would step out at this point. We got a pretty big rock right there, but we are just going to get back into orbit and we're just going to go straight prograde this time, I think. So off we go. Actually, it occurs to me now. No, no, I'll be fine. This is the right way to go. Uh, is it? Yes. If we went retrograde and had a retrograde orbit, then our burn point for return would be over here, which would be out of communication. Doing a prograde means our burn point to uh, leave will be on this side, so it'll be within communication. So this is the right way around. Important to think about that. Okay, so plotting over here, add maneuver out, and that's even too much. We got 1,072 left. I've really overdone it. So maybe I should try it with a smaller lander. Or a smaller system overall, really. I guess we can trust the start burn thing. I haven't even looked at the start burn thing. That's stock. Some people sometimes ask and sometimes people say better burn time. But no, that's stock now. In realism overhaul, it's a bit more complicated to trust that. It's not necessarily right. That should be fine. Okay, so... Sun is there, so let's turn like that. And we're on our way. Okay, how's the comms right now? We're gonna lose it soon. Um, we have a satellite over there. We seem to have a line to it really really thin. I'm going to arm the chute first Okay, and uh, we will orient so that we dump this service module Okay dump and Orient retrograde, but we don't have a core that can hold retrograde on its own. So I'll I'll do this thing where I'm just gonna turn off SAS and hope for the best unless we hit atmosphere and 
things start to look flippy. Uh, while we have control, I'll adjust a little bit. Okay, uh, SIS, please. <laughs> uh, just a little bit. Okay, that's good. I I'll wait until we're in thicker. Uh, we're losing some. We'll get. I didn't mean to stage. I'll I'll just let it go like this because we're gonna get plasma blackout and everything. So here, it's to the whims of the aerodynamics. We do have too much engineering margin on the ablator. We only use 37.03 of it. And pre-deployment of the parachute. So, we know this sort of thing can work. Maybe I should redesign it so it's not so big because we obviously have too much margin. Or maybe we should just go with this and because we tested it. And hope that the presence of a Kerbal doesn't unnecessarily cause more problems somehow. Kerbals sometimes can do that. Sometimes their presence seems to tempt the Kraken or something. Okay, plop, and recover. So this has obviously been a long session as it is. Oh, we got some science. We got 18 science. You know what? Uh, let's see. Well, we get both nose cones and radial decouplers with this. That might lead to a redesign. We'll see. I think we need that. So we've unlocked that, and that might lead to some ideas. But But we could just go with what we've got. We've got the money. Um, so we did even get a world's first milestone and that actually covers the cost of that launch. So that's nice. But okay, so we'll see what happens next time with a Kerbal. One way or another, we're sending a Kerbal to the moon. The question is exactly how. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.